God, a glory to Thee. King, the comfort of the spirit of truth, born in all places, and fill us with all things, treasury of blessings, and giver of life. Come and abide in us, and cleanse us from every stain, and serve our souls a good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, to ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Through the prayers of our Holy Father, as Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Brethren in Christ, Laudato Jesus Christus in Sequila. This is Timothy Flanders with Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome to a new series. God willing, we'll do this every single week, which is going to be called Preparation for the Holy Sacrifice. And this is going to be our weekly guild stream. So this is, we, we're trying to serve our guild community, which is our international community against the Marxists in all its time zones. We have, most of us are in the United States. We also have several Canadians. Uh, we also have a significant amount of Aussies and Kiwis. And this is one of, one of the most difficult things, try to connect with our brethren in Aussie land and Kiwi land and the Filipinos as well because of the time zones. I know right now um, one guild member said it's uh, 1 a.m. Brisbane time right now. And so, it's difficult to accommodate all the, the time zones, especially especially in Oceania. And I've, I've really been wanting to do a series about the, the history of Catholicism, history of the faith in Oceania, also especially the Filipino civilization, Filipino Christendom. Really the only A Asian, East Asian country that is Catholic has a really a strong Catholic civilization is the, the Philippines, but lack of time, so many things, lack of time, but this particular show is going to be our news show. And, but it's called preparation for the Holy sacrifice. And that's because we're going to review some of the big, huge things that are going on in the week. There's several different um, news roundup shows out there, but this show is going to be for the meaning of Catholic guild which means that we're going to prepare ourselves for the Holy Sacrifice. So first reviewing and preparing ourselves for the Sunday Gospel. And because we're meaning of Catholic, we're going to re just touch on the ancient Roman rite, a.k.a. the Latin Mass Sunday Gospel. We're going to touch on the Greek rite Sunday Gospel, a.k.a. the Byzantine rite Sunday Gospel, as well as the New Mass, the Novus Ordo Sunday Gospel. And we're going to touch on a few things, and because this is what the meaning of Catholic is all about. It's about uniting Catholics against the enemies of Holy Church. I want to start with a quote from Vatican II. This is uh, from Volume Two of the Word on Fire collection, Orientalium Ecclesiarum, which is the is the decree on Eastern churches, but it starts in paragraph two with a beautiful statement about the different rites of the church. There are twenty four different catholic churches within the one roman catholic church and only one of them is the latin church and within the latin church is the roman rite and there's so many different 
rites and traditions of the church. And we're only really have really only have space to, to touch on three of those, three of those rites. But this, uh, and there's, so there's more than 24 rites of the church. Uh, I believe, well, some of the, many of the Eastern churches use the Greek rite. So that we're going to touch on a lot of those 24, but then within the one Latin church, there's multiple Latin rites. But anyhow, here's what it says on paragraph two of Orientalium Ecclesiarum. The Holy Catholic Church, which is the mystical body of Christ, is made up of the faithful who are organically united in the Holy Spirit by the same faith, the same sacraments, and the same government, and who, combining together with into various groups which are held together by a hierarchy, form separate churches or rites. Between these, there exists an admirable bond of union, such that the variety within the church in no way harms its unity. Rather, it manifests it. For it is the mind of the Catholic Church that each individual church or rite should retain its traditions whole and entire, and likewise that it should adapt its way of life to the different needs of time and place. End quote. So obviously, everyone knows that in the Latin Church, there's currently a huge liturgical controversy regarding the two forms of the Roman Rite. And Greek Byzantine Catholics are a bit flummoxed by this, and understandably so. Um so, but we're going to comment on these things because there's great good and great riches and great wisdom that can come out of all these different rites every single week. And that's what's so glorious and wonderful about being a Catholic, that we can prepare the holy sacrifice together. We can take stock of the news of what, what has gone on, but we can place this news in the context of the eschatological vision of the kingdom of Christ that is contained in the Eucharistic sacrifice. So today, just a preview of what we're going to cover, we're going to talk about the FSSP visitation. Uh, we're also going to talk about the Synod, which opened this week. We'll talk about Melania Trump. And we'll also highlight our Lebanese brethren. We'll talk a little bit about the history of Lebanon. Uh, it's In fact, it's one of, the, one of the few Middle Eastern countries that has a very large Christian minority. The other big one is Egypt. Egypt has 20 to 30 percent Christians. Lebanon has 40 percent of its entire population of Christians, including one million Catholics and the traditional location of the 700,000 of our Catholic Maronite brethren. One of those 24 churches that I mentioned in the beginning, there's those 24 Catholic churches within the one. One of them is the Maronite Catholic Church, a very unique Catholic and ancient Catholic rite of the church that stretches back over a millennium to before the East-West schism. Uh, so there's 700,000 Maronite Catholics in Lebanon. So we'll talk a little bit about those things. But first and foremost, we will talk about and touch on the Eucharistic sacrifice so we can prepare our hearts and prepare our souls for this time. Now, my hope is that we will do this at a standard time on Saturdays or on Fridays. Right now, Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, as uh, one of our Aussie Guild members said, is in the middle of the night for the Aussies and Kiwis. But I was hoping that Friday in the afternoon would be better for Aussies that might be able to join live. Um, so because it because some Saturdays I like next Saturday, I'm taking my sons to the troops camp out. So I'll have to do this on Friday. But so we'll go back and forth. God willing, we'll see see what works best. And as always, we'll release the first portion of this publicly for everybody, um, hoping that it will will be able to connect with people who care most about this sort of content. This is what Meaning of Catholic has, has been about since the beginning. What we started in 2019, we've been trying to present the riches and the Jew, joy and the rich the wisdom of the faith, and. So we want to connect with Catholics worldwide who are interested in the faith and the spiritual life and how this informs what we're dealing with today. And we're not interested in sensationalism. We're not, not interested in producing uh, reaction videos to this, the other thing. We're interested in building a community of Catholic brethren where we can use the internet to connect with each other in a way that the mystical body of Christ has never been able to connect in the history of the world using this technology. And in so doing, we can support one another to build the real Catholic Christendom in your local community, in your local parish. That's the goal. That's the goal of meaning of Catholic. 
that's how we unite Catholics against the enemies of Holy Church is that we use the internet to build this community. That's that's the main goal. So that's why this guild stream is here to support our guild community. And those of you who are watching the public snippet, if you want to be a part of the guild community, you can go to this link below right here on the bottom of the screen, meanifcatholic.com slash register. Excellent. So let's continue. So tomorrow is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, a.k.a the 27th Sunday, Tempus Paranum. So in the Novus Ordo rite, the time, the, the, the green time in the liturgically green in the, in the Roman rite is known as Tempus Paranum, which means time throughout the year. Now in English, they unfortunately decided to translate that in the worst way possible by calling it ordinary time. Now this refers to ordinal time, meaning the Sundays which are numbered, the ordinal time ordinals but in english the word ordinary uh means ordinary it means boring so you know something that happens every day uh but there's really nothing ordinary nothing boring about the eucharistic sacrifice or opening up the scriptures and i want to emphasize something very important and that is there's a lot of um negative criticism of the novus ordo and we're not really going to get into polemics we're not going to get into that in this show we're going to focus on the good because we're trying to focus on preparing for the Eucharistic sacrifice. And these different lectionaries have different pluses and minuses and different riches that they can we can gain for them. We need to have an attitude of gratitude towards the riches that our Almighty God has given us. And we just think about two immense gifts that we experience every single time we go to the Holy Sacrifice and the liturgy. One is the Holy Scripture, and the other one is the Eucharistic sacrifice itself, the Eucharist. The Bible is the Word of God about the Word of God. It's the Word about the Word. And so we have the Word of God written down, and then we have the Word of God incarnate. And they they are related to one another, but one is divine and one is created. And we can give thanks for the, the immense gifts of the word of god and the the word about the word of god so the 20th sunday after pentecost in the ancient roman rite the latin mass is the healing of the ruler's son at capernaum where our lord says unless you see signs and wonders now while i was very struck by the collect for the latin mass which is what asks god for forgiveness and peace so that we can serve God securamente, securamente. We can, a literal English cognate is a secure mind. This is translated, the word mens in Latin is translated as mind or as heart in English. It's an interesting Latin word. In fact, I think my, I think my Lassant's missile translates it as quiet mind. But this is, this is certainly something that has been I've been thinking about lately. Um, so cleanse from all offenses and with a quiet mind, give themselves the service of God. This is what Lassans translates securamente. And I've been really thinking about this, how, how when we really enthrone truth in our hearts, it quiets our, our, our passions, our emotions, our agitations, our anxieties. And I, I was talking recently with uh, one of our guild members about the 14 rules of St. Ignatius and how powerful they are with when we, we, we talk about consolations and desolations, but how much when we enthrone the truth in our hearts, it quiets our minds. And this is what this show is all about. We're trying to we're prepare ourselves for the Holy sacrifice so that when we look at all the news in the world, it quiets our mind because we're meditating on the truth. So in the, the, in the Byzantine, right, there is, it's also called the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. And this, the gospel is Luke 7, 11 to 16, which is a greater miracle than the healing of the ruler's son. It's one of the few times when our Lord raises someone from the dead. And it's a particularly powerful one, which is raising the widow's son of Naim. And I was recently struck by this because we had the our podcast with Father John, or Father, <laughs> used to be a Protestant pastor, Professor Dr. John Bergsma where he mentioned Ezekiel 37, 
Ezekiel 37, 12, and 13, which is such a powerful text uh, because it's the, the dry bones, the vision of the dry bones and how God raises them from the dead. And in that text, Ezekiel 37, 12, I'm just going to read that. And this is this is also in, in our fellowship of St. Anthony. This is uh, where we we offer up penances for clergy and seminarians. And we read the whole Bible every year. Many of us do. We're currently reading Ezekiel. And so the, the Sunday gospel in the in the Byzantine rite brings out this text from Ezekiel 37. And 37, 12 says, Behold, I will open your graves and will bring you out of your sepulchers, O my people, and will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I shall have opened your sepulchers and shall have brought you out of your graves, O my people. And so it's it's quite amazing uh, at, because at the end of this gospel, Luke 7, 11, at the end of the raising of the widow's name, son, everyone cries out and says, a great prophet has arisen. Um, the, verse 16, Luke 7, 16. There came great fear on them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet is risen up among us, and God hath visited his people. So if, you, if you're reading Ezekiel, Ezekiel himself testifies the divinity of the Messiah. He testifies, it says that God, I will shepherd my people. David will shepherd his my people. There will be one shepherd. I will raise you from your debt. So it's it's a prophecy. Ezekiel is so powerful. It's a prophecy of the incarnation. And that's the Byzantine Sunday gospel. Now, in the 27th Sunday, Tempest Paranum, it's really a marriage Sunday. And it starts with the, the, the building of Eve. And this is something really powerful I got from Bergsma as well in their Word of the Lord series over at St. Paul Center that goes through the new lectionary. Bergsma points out how in Genesis 2, when Eve is created, Eve, Eve is, the Lord says, I will make an Azare for him, where the woman, woman is called an Azare, and the word Azare is called, is, is everywhere else in the Old Testament, Azare means a rescuer from God or a rescuing from the king. And so there is this immense divine power given into the creation of woman. Woman is built not formed adam is the one who's formed out of the earth and and creation is formed but eve is built and this evokes the fact that eve is a temple because you don't form a temple you build a temple and there's this amazing marian typology in the old testament the fact that eve from the very beginning is has a temple there there are temple verbs given to eve and the uh, the usage of the temple in the Old Testament is has a a feminine motif to it, uh, and this is shown in the Psalm of Ascent, which is the responsorial psalm in the New Rite, which is "Blessed is the man, uh, blessed is the man who fears the Lord. His wife shall be a fruitful vine." And so it's a praising. It's a praising of the family life, but this is mentioning how there's the inner penetration between the temple, because the Psalms of Ascent are the ones that are, are that are praying up to the temple. So this that starts on Psalm 120, and it goes all the way to Psalm 132. And uh, so there's this inner penetration between the domestic church, the, so the Old Testament domestic church concept, which is already there in, in the Old Testament, and the woman as a temple, which is all pointing to the fact that Mary is a temple. So every single woman is a temple, and which is a typology of Mary as the temple, uh, which harkens to this, this amazing uh, antiphon here uh, for the Sunday, or the, sorry, the Sabbath, Saturday office of Mary, which calls Mary a temple. O oh, ever blessed mother of God, Mary ever virgin, temple of the Godhead, hallowed shrine of the Holy Spirit. Thou only above all others was acceptable to our Lord Jesus Christ. And so this points to the fact how reverence, reverence for a woman's body is the foundation of marriage 
and marriage is the foundation of the family and the family is the foundation of the civilization. And this is something that uh, my uh, favorite philosopher, really my favorite thinker or writer of the 20th century, Dietrich von Hillebrand, in his classic text, Defense of Purity, he says that reverence, reverence is the foundation of all purity. Reverence. In fact, he says reverence is the foundation of all virtues, but in particular, the virtue of purity regarding sexual purity, it's reverence because it's not, it's not merely uh, abstaining from unclean lusts or fornication. It's not merely abstaining from it, but it's, there's also a positive component it, it, because it's revering the beauty, the metaphysical beauty, the physical beauty, the all sorts of different aspects of the beauty of the woman and for that matter the man there is a reverence for the other side as well but i think that this is very powerful looking at genesis 2 and when we consider how reverence for a woman as a temple in particular it, it's quite it's quite beautiful and uh, quite amazing how god created uh the, these different aspects to the male body and the female body because the the male body always has a transcendent element because every single human person was born of a woman and looked to their father who was transcended to them because there was absolutely no bio there's not absolutely but there was no biological connection or physical connection that the child has with the with the father except for his seed which is so remote in sort of the the recesses of his psyche as to be non-existent and so every single human person looks upon their father and their father's body as transcendent. It's, there's a there's a distance there. There's a there's a uh, so uh, this is this is in the um, Latin word for uh, father pater, which refers to the pattern. So it's an abstract transcendence, whereas mater refers to the material. the The female body is the imminence. It's the imminence of God, and this goes back to the temple. The temple shows the imminence of God and that whereas the men who the men who are in the sanctuary, men as priests, the, the male body as as transcendence, that's why only men should be priests or in the sanctuary as altar boys, etc. Because the male body is always communicating the sim. It's a symbolic meaning of transcendence because that's deep in the human psyche. Um. There's um and the, the gospel, the Sunday gospel of, of the 27th Sunday Tempus Paranum is the, the gospel of our Lord against adultery. He who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And this points to the, the other factor is that um I have a it's something that really needs to be emphasized more often is that is the annulment crisis. The fact that heterosexuals have destroyed marriage long before anybody with same-sex attraction was trying to push like gay marriage and that sort of thing. And I think that there's too much scapegoating of these people who are poor souls and really manipulated. They, they like these people get become the whole gay movement becomes a, you know, that's just a proxy war. The, there's poor, these poor, uh, poor souls with same-sex attraction who are very confused and wounded of various things the reason they get they get uh you know they get used and abused by elites who are trying to push gay marriage and that sort of thing to push their agenda but that would only exist this whole problem would only exist it only exists because of divorce divorce already destroyed marriage decades before gay marriage even became a big cultural issue and so this is a very important thing to emphasize he who divorces his wife marries another commits adultery the indissolubility of marriage. This is what makes Catholic di Catholics different than the Eastern Orthodox. The Eastern Orthodox permit divorce and remarriage of a living spouse. That is not possible. That is not possible for a Catholic because we hold to the words of Jesus Christ. We are bound by the words of Jesus Christ. So that's all we have for the preparation of the Holy Sacrifice. Now let's talk about the news. Let's get into some of your the topics. And if anybody in the chat wants to provide any any comments or questions they want to talk about feel free to jump into the chat let me know i'm gonna
pause for a minute. I'll be back in 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. 